today we want to be every single Pokemon champion and there is a lot of them as the one and only Ash Ketchum. Each region will be using the Pokemon he had there like Greninja for Pokemon Y and Infernape for Pokemon Platinum and so on. If he does manage to beat them all these three powerful trainers he must face to claim victory. With some added rules for more difficulty, could Ash be every Pokemon champion? Let's find out. First up is Pokemon Fire Red and we have the champion for this game Blue. Our team is pretty strong with Pokemon like Tauros, Lapras and Kingler. I didn't want to just use his starters as Ash had quite a diverse pool of Pokemon in Kanto. Blue's lead is his Pidgeot and we lead off with our lead for this run Pikachu. We miss a Thunder turn 1 and we get Sand Fru in our face reducing our accuracy. We miss a Thunder again and we get Feather Dance reducing our attack. However, we do hit a Thunder on turn 3 for the one hit knockout on Pidgeot. Second though, Blue just sends out Rhydon. We can't hurt it and a quick attack does like 1 damage before a single Earthquake takes down Pikachu. I now go into Kingler and we hit a massive Crab Hammer and even with Rhydon's high defense, it falls to our mighty Crab. Third is Executor. A stomp critical hits for massive damage, but a single Giga Drain takes us down and it heals Executor a lot too. That sucks. I go into Prime Ape now and we hit a Mega Kick for good damage. Then we get hit with an Egg Bomb. The next turn, I decide to go for a Thrash, which is enough to take down the Free Headed Eggplant. We're locked into Thrash now and we do massive damage to Alakazam too, who then sets up a future Sight Attack as we get confused. Blue 4 restores and we hit ourselves in confusion. We hit ourselves again and then we die to the future Sight attack. I go into Taurus now and go for Fissure. We actually land it and it's a guaranteed one hit knockout so I'll take that. Then comes Arcanine and I try to Fissure this too but I miss. I keep going for it but eventually Arcanine takes us down. So we go into Lapras and we hit a Water Gun for exactly half as the Flamethrower doesn't do too much to us. A final Water Gun attack and Lapras takes down Arcanine. This leaves a Water v Water standoff. We go for Shockwave doing close to half as Blastoise just heals us with Hydro Pump. How kind of him. We shockwave again to bring him to the red as he heals with his citrus berry and sets up the rain. So a final shockwave attack takes down blue beating our first champion of the run onto the second. Lance is a champion of Jolto and the next we face. Our team is very very weak compared to his. I'm not sure if this is even possible. And I was right. It's just not possible. We can take down a few of his Pokemon but our team is just so frail having first form starters and Pokemon. His team just does way too much damage and we don't even make it past his Aerodactyl ever. I try over and over, but with the moveset, it's just not happening. So I decide to try and improve some of Ash's moves to see if we have a chance then. After 21 attempts and fantastic RNG, we finally make it past Aerodactyl, only to just lose to his Dragonites. This is rough. I'm running out of ideas on how we can even get past Lance. I decided to let myself use a Donphan now to see if that will help. I know Ash didn't evolve it until Hoenn, but even then, it still doesn't matter. We just can't survive any hits. But I I'm me, I never give up, and eventually this happens on our 38th attempt. Lance leads with Gyarados, and we lead with Pikachu. A Volt Tackle takes him out in one move always, but we always take Big Recoil too. We then do a quarter to Dragonite, but we fall to a single Fire Blast. Then I send out Totodile, and I go for Ice Beam to take out his Ace Dragonite, and this is what sets this run different. Dragonite misses a Thunder, and our Ice Beam takes him down in one move also. Then is his third Dragonite, who goes for Thunder Wave, but we break through and Ice Beam him to 1 HP. Lance 4 restores, but we don't get paralyzed and Ice Beam again to bring him back to the red. Lance restores again, but we take him down with a critical hit Ice Beam. And Totodile just took down 3 Dragonites. But then is Aerodactyl. He misses a Thunderfang and Totodile does fantastic damage with an Ice Beam. The next turn though, a Thunderfang brings us low and we get paralyzed. So Aerodactyl finally ends Totodile's spree. We now go into Donphan who tanks an Aerial Ace and we take him out with a hidden power, leaving his last Pokemon Charizard. We live in Aerial Ace and can take him down with a four times super effective Rock Slide, finally, finally beating Lance. We had to have a Dom fan and have upgraded moves and the perfect RNG to even stand a chance, but we made it through barely. We can finally move on to the third champion. In Pokemon Ruby, Steven is the champion. He has mainly rock and steel types, and our team is looking great actually versus him. We have some solid Pokemon in Sceptile, Torkoal, and Glalie too. Steven's lead is Skarmory, and turn one our Pikachu's Vault Tackle, and the animation looks sick by the way, does a massive amount of damage to the Steel Bird before he sets up a layer of spikes, and we take big recoil damage. Steven heals up Skarmory, and our Vault Tackle brings him back down. He then doubles into Claydol, 
who's immune to it as Pikachu then hits an Iron Tail for good damage and reducing his defense too before he falls. I now send out Glalie and with a freezing ice beam we take down Claydol. I don't think the crit we got there mattered either. Steven then sends out Cradilly who's weak to ice and a single ice beam takes down Cradilly too. Then it's back to Skarmory. Steven full restores again but our ice beam does massive damage and we get the freeze, which also doesn't matter, as we take him down with another Ice Beam the next turn. This brings out our Moldol, who we do massive damage to before we take an Ancient Power to put us low. A final Ice Beam and the Ancient Bug falls too, and Glalie's showing his power. Then is his Ace Metagross. An Ice Beam does basically nothing to him before we fall to a Meteor Mash. We now send out our Fire Turtle, Torkoal, and we get hit by an Earthquake doing massive damage, but thanks to our bulk, we survive, and we hit a Flamethrower to take down the Steel and Psychic type. This just leaves an Aggro on left. He goes for an earthquake and Torkoal hangs on by a sliver and hits a massive overheat. And with Agron's low special defense, he falls too, giving us a very nice victory over Steven. And I'll take that after what Lance did to me, but there's still one more champion in Hoenn left to face. Our second champion for Generation 3 is Wallace. He's a water type specialist and we've got great coverage for his team with Sceptile and Pikachu, although the rest of our team may struggle. Wallace leads with a massive Whale Lord and Pikachu lands a critical hit Volt Tackle on the Whale to take it down in one swift attack. Attack. But Waylord's got massive HP and we nearly fall to recoil damage alone. Then rather than sending out a ground type, he chooses a Pokemon four times weak to electric, Gyarados, who falls to a single Volt Tackle too. Then Pikachu does succumb to his recoil damage. I decide to go into Swellow and Wallace sends out Tentacruel. We hit a critical hit Aerial Ace, so many crits this run on both sides before we take an Ice Beam rather low. Wallace burns a full restore as our Aerial Ace is still doing over half to him. A final Aerial Ace and we take down Tentacruel. This brings out the bulky Milotic. We hit an Aerial Ace doing nearly half before Swellow falls to an Ice Beam. I can't afford to Receptile yet, so I go into Torkoal, who's nearly falls to a single Surf. We hit a Body Slam and we paralyze Milotic before he heals with his Berry. We get off a little bit more chip damage before Torkoal falls too. I now go into Corefish and Vice Grip, but we do nothing as Milotic recovers. We then Crab Hammer and Metal Claw, but we're doing absolutely no damage and we just fall to Surfs. So I go into Sceptile and hit a Leaf Blade, critical hitting again and taking down my Milotic. This brings out Ludicolo. It becomes an exchange of Surf and Leaf Blades and Heals and Double Teams as we just keep Leaf Blading. Eventually, we go down to the Overgrow range and we take him down with a Leaf Blade. This brings out his last Pokemon, Whiskash, who's four times weak to Grass. We are in Overgrow range and a Sceptile's Leaf Blade finishes off the Generation 3 champions. It's time to head to Sinnoh. Cynthia is a champion of the Sinnoh region. Her team is a powerful one and we've got some really solid Pokemon, but we also have some weak ones too, like Gibbon. I'm not sure how this will go. Our first attempt was pretty close. Star Raptor puts in some solid work cleaning up the last few Pokemon, but this just leaves me with a Weasel versus a Roserade, and we're just not powerful enough to take it down in one hit, and we're too frail to survive one hit. I'm sure if I play it better, I can beat her. So Cynthia's lead is Spirit Tomb, and I Thunderbolt with Pikachu. Then we take a Dark Pulse, putting us low. The next turn, I Volt Tackle, putting her in the red before we fall to recall damage. Then I go into Gibble and Dragon Pulse on Cynthia's full restore for good damage. We then dig under ground dodging an attack as we connect to bring her back to the red with a critical hit. Then we barely live a dark pulse. A final dig underground from our gibble and we pick up a knockout. But then is our evolution Garchomp who immediately kills us. We now go into Buizel and Ice Punch for massive damage and we get the freeze. Garchomp eats its berry, immediately falls out and takes down Buizel with just one earthquake. I go into Star Raptor for the Intimidate and I go for a Brave Bird and we do just enough damage to take down Garchomp. This brings out my Lotic and I just Brave Bird putting it in the red as it decides to go for an aqua ring taking it out of full restore range so star raptor gets to take it down this brings out togekiss who doesn't take a brave bird well at all before star raptor finally falls to an air slash i go into infernape and cynthia full restores but our flare blitzes are doing massive damage and we take her down this leaves her with two pokemon left both weak to fire we flare blitz roserade for a one shot and this brings out our last pokemon lucario but it's part steel type and infernape's flare blitz destroys him beating cynthia it's time to head to Unova where two champions await us. First up in Gen 5 is Alder and he's got some solid Pokemon. Definitely a bug theme going on here, so our Pig Knight is going to be valuable. Let's give it a shot. Alder's lead of a Cell Gore means Pikachu won't get an attack off, so we quick attack before we die to a single Bug Buzz. Then we send out Pig Knight. A Cell Gore misses a Focus Blast and we go for a Flame Charge, boosting our speed and critical hitting to take him down. So many crits. Then is Bufalon. We hit a Brick Break for over half, then we take an Earthquake to Blade. Then Alder full restores, but our Brick Break does so much damage, there's no way he can survive. He then sends out a Scavalier and a Blaze boosted Flame Charge just
just demolishes the bug and steel type. Fourth is Volcarona, and we can't hurt it unfortunately, so we brick break for a little damage before we fall to a bug buzz. This lets us go into Bulldor. Volcarona tries to set up, but Rock Blast just destroy the fire and bug type and he stands no chance. Then is Drudigon, who crits us with a Night Slash before we hit a 5 turn Rock Blast putting the dragon low. He hits us again with a Night Slash before Baldor picks up a second knockout. Last is the Ice Cream Vanillix. He quickly takes down Baldor with a Blizzard, so we just go into Crookedal. We connect to Stone Edge and that's enough to melt the Ice Cream and give us our first Gen 5 victory. On to the second. Iris is the second champion and the majority of her Pokemon are dragons. Crookedal and Dragon Claw will for sure be the MVP here. We need to do serious damage before he falls. Iris' lead is Hydreigon and turn 1 Pikachu hits a resisted Volt Tackle but we get the Paralysis and Hydreigon doesn't attack us. Turn 2 we hit an Iron Tail and get the Defense Drop before one move just takes us down. Now we go into Pig Knight to instantly take down Hydreigon with a Brick Break and for some reason Iris goes into Aggron. We Brick Break again and it barely hangs on as it just auto is raising its speed. Iris goes for the full restore, so I flame charge boosting our speed on the heal. Then we hit a Brit Break to take it down after flame charge's damage. Third, she chooses her ace, Haxorus. We get off a Brick Break for decent damage thanks to a great attack stat as he sets up with Dragon Dance, not good. Then Haxorus kills Pig Knight with an Earthquake. I instantly go into Crookedal to intimidate Haxorus as he goes for another Dragon Dance before he falls to a Dragon Claw. Fourth is Drudagon. With Dragon Claw barely missing out on the KO before a full Focus Blast brings us to the red. A final Dragon Claw though, and we get to take down Drudigon. This now brings out her Lapras, A Stone Edge does fantastic damage before Crookedal falls to an Ice Beam. I now go into Leovanni to take down Lapras with an Energy Ball, leaving only an Archeops left. We Energy Ball taking him below half and activating Defeatus, but there's no chance we survive an Acrobatics and we go down. I go into Palpatol who takes an Acrobatics and misses a Hydro Pump. We take one more attack before we connect to Hydro Pump, taking down Archeops and defeating Iris. With that, Gen 5 is beat. It's time to head to Kalos and Gen 6. Diantha is a champion of Kalos and who we take on next. Her team's pretty strong, but so is ours, with all of them being great. But we do have a very big weakness to Rock and her Mega Gardevoir. Holucha is her lead, and we have the better matchup here. We're faster than the Luchador Bird and take it instantly out with a super effective Volt Tackle. Then we take hefty recoil damage in the process. This brings out her T-Rex or Tyrantrum, and Iron Tail does a surprising amount of damage before Tyrantrum hits a critical hit head smash to take down Pikachu and he puts himself low from recoil. I now go into Holucha who actually looks like it can put a massive dent in her team. We hit a Karate Chop and being part Rock type Tyrantrum falls too. She then sends out her Ice Dinosaur Aurorus but this thing is 4 times weak to fight in so a Karate Chop just demolishes him and that's 2 quick knockouts for Holucha. But then is the bulky Dino Gudra. Our Karate Chop still is doing close to half as the Dragon Pulse is doing roughly the same amount of damage back to us. We exchange the same attacks once more putting us both in the red and Diane for now full restores and I go for a risky move high jump kick but we land it and the damage from it is scary. Diane for heals once more but we get lucky and connect our next one and it critical hits so Gudra falls. That's probably like 30 critical hits this run so far. This brings out Gal guys who can immediately revenge kill us with a shadow sneak. I decide to give our own Gudra some time in the limelight. It's actually under level 2 which is not that good but we outspeed the ghost and grass type to take it really low with an ice beam before we get trick or treated adding the ghost type to us. Diane for full restores her Gal Geist, but it's in vain as our Ice Beam rolls better this time and takes her down. This leaves her final Pokemon and by far the most scary Gardevoir. Gardevoir Mega evolves into Mega Gardevoir and we outspeed thanks to the stat change not taking effect yet before a Moonblast brings us incredibly low. The next turn she outspeeds us again and takes us down. I decide to go into Greninja now who's not Battle Bond yet unfortunately. We go for a Water Shuriken. I probably said that wrong. We hit Gardevoir though only twice before a single moon blast destroys our Greninja. I now go into my last dragon, Noivern, who outspeeds Gardevoir and thanks to no item and acrobatics is more than enough to take down the Mega. Beating Diantha and becoming champion of Kalos, it's time to set sail to Alola. How is the person we fight to become champion here and he's always one of the most trickiest. His team really does pack a punch, although we have one of our strongest teams yet. We also have Greninja still and that's so we can try and use Battle Bond. How's lead is an Alolan Raichu and we lead off with our Pikachu wearing the Alola hat. It's a terrible matchup for us. There's only one thing I want Pikachu to do, and he does. We survive a psychic from Raichu just barely, and this means we can go for our Z move, 10 million bolt Thunderbolt. This is a unique move to Pikachu, and I must say the animation is fantastic. Game Freak did a really good job. I do like what they did with some of the Z moves. By unleashing this attack, we actually managed to do 
over half, even though it's resisted thanks to a critical hit. The next turn, Raichu wins the speed race and beats us with a quick attack, but this gives me the perfect opportunity to go into Greninja. We thankfully outspeed and hit a Night Slash to take down Raichu, and this in return activates our ability of Battle Bond, and we transform into Ash Greninja. But there's a big issue. It's only going to be short-lived as how sends out a Leafeon. We go for an Aerial Ace, but our attack just isn't that great. We do half, and then a single Leaf Blade takes down Ash Greninja. Anticlimatic, I know. I can now go into Incineroar, another real powerhouse, and we take a Leaf Blade pretty decently. Then we deliver a Fire Fang to knock out the Evolution. How sends out Tauros next, who intimidates us, and for some reason, my screen's been a bit tiny cut here, so I do apologize. He hits an Earthquake, and we go down to the red, activating Blaze, so our Fire Blast does a tremendous amount of damage to him. The next turn, though, we do fall to an Earthquake, but we've done great damage. Our options are starting to get pretty limited, so I go into Rowlet. He hits a Double Edge, and I'm thinking that's the end, but Rowlet survives on 1 HP, and Tauros falls to his own recoil. Then How sends out Crabominable, the Ice and Fighting Crab. Rowlet outspeed, hits a Brave Bird, and takes down the Ice Fighting Crab before losing its 1 HP to recoil. He did more than Ash Greninja did, I'm shocked. We now go into Lycanroc, and out comes Noivern. This is coming down to the wire. We hit a Priority Accelerock for over half as a Super Fang puts us at exactly half two. One more Acela Rock and we take down Noivern. This just leaves his starter and ace Incineroar left. We connect to Stone Edge putting Incineroar on just a sliver before he hits an Earthquake to take down Lycanroc. This leaves us with a one on one. We go into our last Pokemon and I'm probably going to say this wrong, Naganadel. How for restores his Incineroar as our Sludge Bomb does close to half but we get a Poison too. See he takes a bit more chip damage putting him under half. This means a final Sludge Bomb from our Ultra Beast and we take down Incineroar and we defeat How in a pretty close battle but it was a fantastic one at that. It's time for the Switch games now. So for Trace and we're back to Kanto, we've still got a full team of Pokemon we can use which is fantastic. Although his team can be pretty easy usually and we've got a Melmetal this fight, let's destroy Trace. The battle starts off by Trace Mega Evolving his Pidgeot into Mega Pidgeot and we do fantastic damage with a Thunderbolt before we take a Heat Wave to close to half. Then Trace pulls a double on us going into Marowak so he's immune to our attack. We then Iron Tail for good damage also before we dodge a Bulmerang. We Iron Tail again this time and he connects a Bulmerang doing fantastic damage to us. We get off yet another Iron Tail and we get the defense lowered before his next Bulmerang takes out Pikachu. I now decide to unleash Melmetal. Marowak's defense is lowered and we have a move called Double Iron Bash. Trace full restores and our Melmetal takes him down with ease. Trace now sends out Rapidash the Fire Horse to counter us. He hits the Flare Blade and we take it all right to be honest and our double iron bash after recall is still doing great damage he then hits a bigger flare blitz the next turn bringing us low as he critical hits but he just takes himself out from recall doing so trace now sends out mega pidgeot again we take a heat wave putting melmetal on just 11 hp but we survive and take down his mega with melmetal and he's shown his true power here but out comes jolteon to instantly finish us off with a thunder attack but melmetal did fantastic we don't really have good options left so i go into muck but we only know three moves because Ash new free moves in the anime. Sludge Bomb is looking like a 3 to 4 hit knockout as we luckily dodge a thunder but then he connects it and we're doing enough so eventually we do get to take down Jolteon. Then out comes Slowbro. While we're at half we just throw Sludge at him too and we snag a poison but a psychic just immediately takes down Muck in yet another critical hit. Now we are really struggling. I now go into Pidgeot who also knows free moves and this was a very long exchange. If you've seen my other champion challenges then you know Trace has about 5 billion full restores. So so it becomes an exchange of wing attack, surfs, and full restores. Eventually, we get Slowbro low enough where he doesn't heal and Pidgeot picks up the knockout, but it's rarely weakened, and his last Pokemon is only a Valplume, though. Wing attack does fantastic damage, and Valplume sets up a reflect. So our next wing attack now doesn't kill, and we take a Sludge Bomb to a sliver of health. Then Trace uses yet another full restore. This means we can bring Valplume down low again, but we lose another Pokemon, Pidgeot. But do not fret, we send out Mr. Mime, or Mimey, with a psychic attack, we take down Trace, beating Kanto for the last time. It's time to head to Gala. The champion for Sword and Shield is Leon. His team is really strong with a Gigantamax Charizard. And now we have Ash's champion winning team. How will Ash fare versus Leon this time in the games? Let's find out. Leon's lead is his Aegislash, and Pikachu here goes for Electro Web as he King Shield, meaning turn one is just a dead turn. The second turn, we unleash a Volt Tackle for fantastic damage before Aegislash just instantly kills Pikachu. Pikachu with a Shadow Ball. I now go into Sir Fetched. I go for a Detect expecting the King Shield, but he doesn't go for it. Alright, I see. So now I go to Attack. 
and he goes for a king shield, reducing our surfetched attack. Well done, Leon, you completely played me. Now we do get to hit a brutal swing for good damage before surfetch gets hit with a flash cannon for good damage and reducing our special defense too. But a final brutal swing when he's not in shield form and he falls. This brings out Mr. Rhyme, the dancing Mr. Mime. I go for a fury cutter, still doing great damage considering our reduced attack stat before we fall to a psychic attack. I decide this is a good time to send out Lucario and unfortunately we can't mega evolve, but our bullet punch does bring into a sliver of HP as he goes for a teeter dance confusing us. Leon now burns a full restore healing up before we break through and punch him again. Then Lucario breaks through once more to deliver a final bullet punch to take out Mr. Rhyme. This now brings out Haxorus. Lucario snaps out of confusion and hits a force palm for great damage and gets a paralyze and he gets parahaxed. We then force palm one more time bringing him low before he breaks through and hits an earthquake to just obliterate Lucario. So our best play next is Dragonite, who outspeeds Haxorus and takes him out of a Dragon Claw. This then brings out the faster dragon, Dragapult. He hits a Dragon Breath for solid damage before a Draco Meteor one-shots him, but at the downside of reducing our special attacks that harshly. Leon then brings out his Water Star Arinteleon next. A Dark Pulse critical hits us, putting us close to the end, but our attack isn't reduced, so we Dragon Claw to bring him to half. The next turn, he takes out Dragonite with a Dark Pulse. This this gives us the best time to go into Gengar. We Gigantamax our Gengar and go for a G-Max Terra and this is for sure enough to take down Inteleon. This leaves his last Pokemon Charizard. Leon Gigantamaxes Charizard so it's a standoff as we outspeed and hit another G-Max Terra for fantastic damage as Charizard goes for a Max Rockfall for some reason which we tank better. Then we both take chip damage as this sets up the Sandstorm. With that chip damage however, our next and last G-Max Terra is enough to take down Charizard, beat Beating Leon and becoming champion of Gala. It's time to head to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. The last champion is Gita for Generation 9 and she's got some really unique Pokemon. Ash unfortunately retired at this point, but we can still do this challenge for him. What I'm going to do is use a different Pokemon for each generation now. I didn't want to just use starters, so we've mixed it up a little bit too. Her lead is a Sparfair and Pikachu's faster and a Volt Tackle does great damage, but our frailty shows as we instantly die to a Lumina Crash with a critical hit. But I'm not sure that mattered at all. My next Pokemon is Heracross. We outspeed her Sparfer and connect her 85% accuracy Megahorn to take it down. Second, she then goes into Go Goat for some reason. I'm guessing because of play rough, but our Megahorn just obliterates the Grass Goat in one hit too. Third, she sends out King Gambit and it's part Dark type, so even he doesn't take a Megahorn well, which we've now hit three times in a row, by the way, and it does half. Then we take a Zen Headbutt, barely hanging on with 24 HP. Heracross then connects a fourth Megahorn to take down King Gambit. Gita now sends out Veluza and I'm thinking, all right, we're gonna die to an Aqua Jet. Nope, she doesn't go for it. And we connect a fifth Megahorn in a row to take down the Psychic Fish. Avalug comes out and at this point I'm shocked. I even checked Megahorn's accuracy. Then we connect a Rock Slide for a tiny bit of damage before Heracross finally falls to an Avalanche, but what a shift he just put in. I send out Infernape next and go for a Flare Blitz, but Avalug is bulky and hangs on with 1 HP. As he goes for an Earthquake, but Infernape hangs on with 3 HP to activate in Blaze. We then get to take down the Ice Slab with a Flame Wheel. This leaves one Pokemon left, and it's a race Glamora. Gita terrestrializes it into a pure Rock type, and I just go for a Blaze Boosted Flare Blitz for great damage considering, but we take ourselves out too. I then go into Greninja, and we get Poison thanks to Glamora's ability, which is Toxic Debris. I go for a Water Shuriken, and we keep connecting it. We hit Glamora five times, bringing her down to 1 HP before Glamora goes for a Terror Blast, bringing Greninja super low. After poison damage, we're in the red, but this means we can just finish her off with a final water type attack, defeating Glamora, beating Gita, and defeating every single Pokemon champion as Ash Ketchum. Or have we? Atop of the snowy Mount Silver is legendary trainer Red and a champion trainer too. But our first attempt goes horribly. We can only take down half of his team before we just lose. Let's try again. Nope, still not happening. Hail just really hurts the Pokemon I've chose because I'm very smart and gave myself two flying types. But I like to persevere, so I'm going to keep on going. Attempt 15 and we get this fight. The battle starts off with a Pikachu standoff. Our Volt Tackle brings him low and his just outright kills us. And after recoil, we both just die, which I think is a fitting start to a red versus ash battle then is lapras and we choose Domfan. a rock slide brings him to half hp before a blizzard just demolishes us we then send out star raptor to revenge kill lapras with a 
close combat. Then out comes Snorlax, who takes the close combat to literally 1 HP, which is bad because we definitely die to a blizzard after the defense drops, but it's good because he now falls to hail damage. We then go into our shiny Noctowl. I go for a Foresight and I take a blizzard to half. I then risk it and put it to sleep with Hypnosis. We then start using air slashes while we both keep taking hail damage too, but thanks to a miss, we only bring him to 1 HP again before Red uses a full restore and we're just super low. We luckily land another Hypnosis, so we get off a few more attacks before Red heals him yet again. Then we just fall to hail damage. I go into Glalie and I go for a headbutt and we get a flinch. We then keep headbutting as Blastoise luckily misses Focus Blast and then he falls. But this just brings out Charizard. We Ice Beam, we freeze him, but it just falls out instantly and he flare blitzes us to 13 HP and takes himself to the Red in Recoil too. Red then full restores Charizard as our next Ice Beam critical hits him to take him out in one move. Another critical hit. The RNG is just absolutely insane this fight. This brings out Venusaur, who we bring low with an Ice Beam before we die to a Sludge Bomb. And after Hail, he's in the red. We send out Torkoal, our last hope is red full restores, and we Flamethrower critically hitting again and taking him out. I think we won regardless of the crit, but the amount of Hypnosis hits, critical hits, and freezes was just amazing. Team Plasma N and a champion himself, who also has a legendary. We need to win to continue. N leads off with Reshiram, and we lead with Pikachu. We outspeed and hit a Volt Tackle, paralyzing the legendary as he hits a Fusion Flare to just obliterate us. We then send out Tauros, and I just go for Fishers. We're just not lucky, and we don't hit any, and Reshiram takes us down. Then we go into Crocodile, and we Dragon Claw for huge damage as we take in Fusion Flare. And for restores his legendary, but we just keep Dragon Claw in, and Crocodile gets to take him down. Then is Vanillix, but ends Vanillix is more powerful than Alders, and survives the Stone Edge barely before taking Crocodile down with a Blizzard. Perfect time to go into Pig Knight, who Flame Charges for the knockout and raises our speed. But this just brings out Caracosta. We do huge damage with a Brick Break before a Waterfall just destroys us. We send out Unpheasant, who actually can't really hurt this thing either, and it's looking like this is over. We barely survive a Stone Edge on 8 HP, but then we just die to an Aqua Jet the next turn, so it's all up to Kingler. Kingler comes out and hits a Stomp that does nothing, but we flinch. So our next Stomp takes him out. Then is Clinklang, who takes a Crab Hammer and lives and Thunderbolts us, nearly taking us out. But our next Crab Hammer deals with him. This brings out Zoroark, who we outspeed and crab hammer for the one shot too, leaving only an Archeops left. Kingler shows his true power by taking down the rock and flying bird and saving our N attempt. It's time for the last champion of the games. Kieran, the most latest champion to be introduced and one of the hardest. This has a focus on double battles. As it's Ash's last battle, I decided to upgrade a few of our Pokemon moves from the pretty awful moveset. Things like giving Lycan Rock Crunch Over Bite and Greninja Ice Beam. I've learnt my lesson from the last video. Our first attempt is actually quite good. We managed to make it to Hydrapple, but only with a weakened Infernape, so he just falls to a single attack. I think if I play this better, we can win very quickly. We lead with Pikachu and Greninja into Dragonite and Politoed. I Terrastalize Pikachu to power up his electric moves, as he's the one I think would probably get Terrastalized a lot in the anime. Then Greninja Ice Beams Dragonite. Protean activates, which turns us into the Ice type for the whole fight now, taking him to half. And we hit a boosted Volt Tackle, but Politoed has a Wakanberry completely negating the boost, and takes half before a Weather Ball from Politoed kills Pikachu very easily. Dragonite then goes for a Thunder on Greninja, Ninja, but thanks to our ability, we take it a bit better, but it still does massive damage. I now send out Sceptile. Greninja can take down Dragonite with an Ice Beam, and Sceptile's Leaf Storm does just enough damage to take down Politoed too, so we don't take any more damage this turn, which is best case scenario. However, this brings out two massive threats, Incineroar and Porygon Z. Incineroar fakes out Greninja turn 1, then Sceptile hits a Rock Slide. Not for much damage, but we get the all-important flinch on Porygon Z. Then the next turn, Greninja hits a Rain Boosted Hydro Pump for huge damage as we rock slide again with Sceptile. This time Porygon Z does hit a Hyper Beam and that's for sure a dead Sceptile, but we flinch Incineroar so again amazing RNG. We send out Lycanroc in place of Sceptile and Porygon Z is recharging, so only Incineroar to worry about. Greninja's Rain Boosted Hydro Pump just takes him out and Lycanroc finishes off Porygon Z with a Stone Edge. This just leaves us against two Pokemon, his Ace Hydrapple and Grimmsnarl. Kieran terrestrializes Hydrapple into a Fighting type as Greninja's Ice Beam Grimmsnarls and Lycanroc Stone Edge critical hits Grimmsnarl, putting him in the red, but he hangs on and kills Greninja with his Spirit Break. Then Hydrapple goes for a Fickle Beam on Lycanroc, but as he didn't go all out, we survive it. Now I send out Heracross. Lycanroc can instantly kill Grimmsnarl with an Accelerock, leaving us with a 2 on 1, as Heracross's Mega Horn does decent damage to Hydrapple, who then goes for a Terror Blast to kill Lycanroc. This leaves us with an Infernape, 
and a Heracross left, but it's looking good for us. Infernate's Flare Blitz does great damage to Hydrapple, and Heracross connects another Mega Horn to bring him to the red as an Earth Power obliterates Infernate too. This leaves us with a fully healthy Heracross who connects the last Mega Horn of the run to take down Hydrapple, beating Kieran second try and defeating every single champion as Ash Ketchum. Honestly, this run was a blast to do. I tried to keep all the moves as accurate as possible for the whole run too. I think I did pretty well in that department, but I did have to change them up a few times. It was so fun to use all of Ash's different Pokemon, and I know I missed a few starters like Charizard, Bulbasaur, Squirtle, Oshawa, but I did a Kanto run with them when I first created my channel, and I wanted to give others the limelight for once. If you liked the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. As always, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you in the next one.